Welcome to Keto Beyond the Couch, episode 227. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday... We go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time, our episode number is one of my previous favorite shows in TV history... You'll be alert really? to it. Like, it was a good show, but... I loved it. I watched it every single week. And I noticed that, like, uh, Dustin actually recognized the number also. I was so glad that I'm not, like, the only nerd, because that I heard that, too. Mary! <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love Jack Hay. Welcome to Two Crazy Ketos, Keto Beyond the Couch. This is all about subscribers. We like to come on every Monday live at 10 a.m. just to... Um, Celebrate subscribers. Find yes. different things from our social media groups, Mighty Networks, and our Facebook group, and uh, celebrate wins as well as answer questions and comments from the last week. If you are new here, the way we do this is we pretty much do a live. We don't pay too much attention uh, to the chat, and we address the chat the last 10 to 15 minutes. If you have a question regarding a topic we're talking about, then the best thing to do is use that super chat function. That's a little dollar sign down below. That will highlight our screen and let us know that you have a question. We can address it right then and there. It also does help benefit the channel, and we greatly appreciate that. We sure do. Praise God. We're so excited that we got home safely from antithetic Baltimore to God be the glory. That was a fantastic conference like it, it was, was the really first good. you know so you're you're kind of prepared for like a lots of bumps because it was brand new first time right. and i thought it was a wild success probably just written on my heart as one of my favorite conferences that we've ever attended it was just so much fun it was really good however however we, we did release a video the other day okay we released the carnivore meat flour like how to make your own meat flour video yes uh, i left the link for it down below and then we had a vlog yesterday where we showed a couple of other things that we have been working on and i really want to vent which i didn't tell you i was going to vent oh i just want to say listen when we make a recipe video we do not go onto the internet and start going hey how do i do this and then copy someone's recipe lord no so there's pretty much no recipe now or that will ever come out in the future by us or anybody else that isn't in has it in some way Somewhere ever been done before in the history of mankind right? it's like cake there's like four or five basic ingredients and it's just a matter of like extra things and how you tweak it and things like that but like, it's been done, right? Yogurt, it's been done. So when we make a video, we figure out, and this is how we want to do it, and we make a video when we make a recipe. it's We're not reinventing the wheel. We didn't create meat flour. The meat flour recipe came because we've been experimenting with the meat flour from Carnivore Chris, and it's expensive. As a matter of fact, it was pointed out to us that, hey, these are some expensive ingredients. Is there an option? So we decided... Let's figure out if we can do it cheaply on our own. So we're not going to, when we release a video, go onto YouTube and go, has anybody ever created a meat flour? And then just say, oh, it's been done. We don't need to do it. And we certainly, unless we take somebody's recipe, like Maria Emmerich's egg pudding recipe, and modify it, I don't feel like we have to go find, well, somebody created this 50 years ago, so here's a link to that one. Right. This is this is mayonnaise from colonial England. Right. But you know what, baby? But anytime we do use somebody's recipe and modify it, tweak it, or make it, we always link that in our description and mention it. I think that you don't need to get upset about it, honestly. I think that if people know our hearts... They're, they're, if they get you, they get you. Right. And if they don't, they never will. I think that, you know, that that 
rule that 10% of people are just not going to like you because they're just not going to like you. Right. And then I think that once someone's decided I'm not going to like somebody, then they start making a case for the decision that they've already made. No, I, I understand. It's just that there were a couple more even on another video, oh, on wow. yesterday's video. It's like, I'm sure there are other people who have figured out how to cook a brisket in four or five hours. Can I just but tell you? We discovered it on our own. Can I just tell you that I love you so much and I really appreciate you for protecting me from comments by yes. being that person that has to go to the front of the battle line and like read all of the comments and answer those. I really appreciate so you. So let's jump into Keto Be on the Couch. Before we do that though, we wanted to share a little gift we got yes. in Baltimore. I would love to just focus on this. And Peggy Fitzmore, who may be the most talented person. I mean, people just keep amazing me with their talent. But Peggy uh, Fitzmore uh, shared this with us. Um, it says, thanks, not just for the big things you do, but all the wonderful little things you do. See, Joe? And I love this. Look at this. She's got this thing. It says, be kind. And she's got this neat little game that you get all these cards that maybe have like an affirmation or a challenge to do something that we can pass on. And I'm going to pack this in my backpack, Peggy, and I'm going to make sure that I give one out whenever we go to a conference. She also shared some Band-Aids that have hearts on them and says, yeah, ouch. Yeah, it's funny because I got a for new Joe. one. You I, got a new one? Yeah, I was weed eating the other day, and there's a plastic there's cover a that covers the muffler. Uh -huh. On a weed eater, well, it's broken off on one of ours, and I was weed eating with Anthony at the church, and my arm hit it. That is a nasty. That's it that's five days old. Burns really hurt, especially if you if you've got one of those burns from putting the bacon in the oven. My gracious! Still have a boo boo. Look from the at part. this adorable thing that she made. So she made these avocados, one for me and one for Joe. Here is. The Joe avocado with the Band-Aid that says, ouch, fishing. And she said, I couldn't find lionfish, but she found these cute little fish. I thought this was so stinking creative. And then also, here's me. And I don't think I've ever more appropriately been captured. I love it. As this, look at this bling. It says dream big. I mean, it got a hair bow, earrings. I love it. Peggy, thank you so much. MJ. Such a blessing. Thank you so much for the oh, 49 super chat. Wow. So thank you for being such a blessing to our community. So grateful to have been able to meet and spend some time oh, with you. Oh my at goodness. Thank you so much. MJ, MJ, it was our privilege. It was such a great pleasure really means a lot to, us. to get to meet people in person. Like we get to talk all the time, but to get a face with a name, I can't tell you how much that blesses my heart. Like to finally see people face to face. Thank you for that. And wow. We do have some other conferences we will be attending over the next few weeks. July 28th so, and 29th. July 28th and 29th next week. We will be at the Hard to Kill Summit in Omaha, Get Nebraska. Get your tickets. We have a link and everything for that down below. That is next Friday and Saturday. August 3rd through the 6th is we Keto Orlando. Orlando. And Super then, excited. And of course, Keto Palooza the first October week of October. 6th through the 8th. So stinking excited. Links for all of those are down Come below. Come on out and see us. And better, more importantly than seeing us, see one another. Yes. This is great. Yep. So uh, before we move on, you want to sing happy birthday I to do. Sabrina. I see Sabrina and Kimberly have a birthday today. So we're going to sing to both of you ladies together. You ready? Yep. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sabrina, Sabrina and Kimberly. Kimberly. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. And many more, so many more to you young ladies. Okay. Just getting started. Let's start off with our subscriber of, or not subscriber week, our Keto College Adjunct Professor Yay! of the Week. This was from Becca. I Professor love this. Professor Becca. You can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. Wow. You can change the people around you. That is so good. Take a friend in Tori. Yep. Who is speaking into your life? Who gets like a vote when you are, well, who's on your advisory board yeah. when it comes to you moving forward? One of the best things that got brought out and I think needed to be said at uh, the antithetic 
conference was find your context. That's right. You need to find out what is your number one priority. Yeah. Is it weight loss? Is it getting healthy in some specific area of right. your life even? Is it movement? Do you know that what you need to focus on is living your life? Maybe you're not in Keto 101 anymore. It's time for you to move forward. Are, are you carnivore? You're, you're focusing on just that. <laughs> if you know what your context is, pivot yourself towards following yeah. things that fuel that, right? Like, otherwise you're just gonna continue to be frustrated. My yep. mom brought up like such a good point this morning when we were talking about this very topic. She said, you know, years ago, they had a store called 579, yep. all right? Guess what? It was for sizes five, seven, and nine. So if you're a size 11, why are you going in there? Why are you going in there? One of two things are happening. You're gonna go in there and you're gonna know there's nothing for me in here. Yep. You're going to get frustrated. Then what's the next thing you're going to do? Feel the need to go to the, the counter and tell the cashier, I am outraged, right. absolutely upset. There is nothing in here for me. This is not, this is not fueling my goals. This, is, uh, this makes me feel angry, right? right? What, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing in there? That ain't for you. And here's the thing. Years ago, I saw a great, in fact, I purchased it and keep it on my computer and watch it every while. It was a great... Uh, series of sermons from Pastor Ed Young at Fellowship Church, and he's talking about, like, people around you. It, it, it was called Crazy People. Right. And you got to figure out, like, like Becca's talking about, you can change people around you. If you have friends and family who are super negative, we're not saying get them out of your life, but we're put them into your outer all circle. all the time with them. You have you, if you have you in the middle, like, f picture, like, a target. Right. The people in those closest circles to you they should be people who are a positive influence in your life, who support you in things you do, who think the way you think. And then as you move out, that's where those negative people go. And if somebody is negative, nah, 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 in your ear all the time, they need to be on the outermost circle, even if it is a close family member. Yeah. The people that are close to you should be people who are going to lift you up. And it is okay to take friends and family and put them to the outer circle. It is. Yep. It is. That, that is. that is. Today, my question, the question of the day was, what's the best part of being an adult? Yeah. Part of that is having permission to be like, yeah, I need to be able to prioritize like who I'm around the most. You know, the kids get to decide what their schedule looks like, who they're going to spend time with, right? We're able to do that too. Yep. Let's move on to the first subscriber of the week. This one is Edward. Hey, Edward. Edward said, June 14th was my three-year anniversary. Nice. These two pictures were taken at the beginning of my journey and then three years later. My starting weight was 317. Currently, I'm 186 at 56 years old. I'm currently feeling the best I've ever felt. Oh, that's the wrong that's one. That's not Edward. That is, we got it, you screwed up. There we there go. There we go. There's Edward. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I think that he is fit enough now to actually fight that bear. Yeah. I love it. Wow. Fantastic. Congratulations on that. Sorry about that. Let's so move on good. to the next one. It is Nora. Hey, Nora. Nora said, Rachel, 166 pounds this morning. Yes. 100 equals 190 pounds, 68 years old. I am rocking the shorts. You are rocking the shorts. I absolutely loved your entire outfit. The smile on your face is so stinking beautiful. Fantastic job. I am so stinking proud of you. Yep. And uh, we do have one more. This one is Frankie. Hey, Frankie. Frankie said, hello, I'm new. I love this community already and have been popping in on the live streams when I'm supposed to be sleeping in Australia. I think she's actually here because she said, OMG, this, that, that was me. That yes. wrong picture. We're going to get well, it right this time. Just thought I'd share that this has helped me visualize how much I'm actually losing. On the left is how much I've lost this week. 0.7 kilograms. On the right is how much I lost the previous couple months at 7.8 kilograms. This is accurate. I almost hate to read this part to Rachel. This is accurate. Yes, I've worked out the volume in, of one kilogram of fat and I made Play-Doh. I want to make Play-Doh But now. honestly, I'm having fun with yes. it. Yes. I'm down nearly 10 kilograms, 22 pounds, since the end of April. A little slower than I'd like. That is awesome, that by is the way. That is flipping but awesome. But I have fibromyalgia and a neck injury, so exercise is not happening at the moment. But as I feel better, I'll try to do some. Only 120 pounds ago. Oh, geez. Ignore the bunny hat. And here there is There we the go. Right now picture. we have it correct. Frankie, congratulations. You look incredible. 
Joe, I want to make 170 pounds worth of Play-Doh. I could fill my she shed in it. You have to make your own because Play-Doh is expensive. Ma imagine what I could make that's so much more productive than, yeah. than just 170 pounds of fat. Frankie, way to go. And yeah. I'm glad that we got the picture right. I do want to say 20 pounds since April. That is awesome. So yes. bigger. Let's even, I don't even know what date, but let's say April 1st. April to April to May, May to June, June to July. You're halfway through July. That's two and a half months, right? That is what? More than two pounds a week? That is that a healthy, is sustainable. A, a healthy, above average yes. weight loss. Mm -hmm. That is a healthy, above average weight loss. Here's the thing. Everybody who wants to come in and go, hey, I want to lose 25, 30 pounds a month. Stop reading Women's World. Well, Forget that. It's not even good for you. Right. Okay. First of all, you're not losing that much fat. The most fat you're going to lose is two pounds in a week. You're going to be losing muscle. The faster you lose, you lose other things. Also, the slower you move, that you lose that weight, the easier it is for your skin to gain back some elasticity. When you lose weight like overnight, like people who lose like 30 and 60 pounds over a couple months, that's where you'll see a lot more loose skin. The first time Rachel lost weight, she had a lot of loose skin, but as she, when she started doing it slower, the skin kind of came back a little bit. Okay, so I have a great idea that just occurred to me because Frankie was joking that like by the time she loses like the rest of her goal, she's gonna have to be carrying it around in a wheelchair or, or a wheelbarrow. So I have a I have an idea. Okay. Okay. So if you're just getting started, or if you're you know the goal now, hey, as you lose weight, it is off of your body. Yep. Start lifting that amount of weight. Oh, that's good. So if you are have lost two pounds so far, you've started your journey, two pounds, start lifting two pounds in 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 barbells. I love okay. That. I love As that. you elevate, you are strength training and you and you would prove that you could carry that amount because we got around carrying it. I at least hoisted my 170 pounds up to get to the kitchen to eat. Yeah. So as we are losing the weight, start lifting that much weight and we will strength train at the same time that we are losing weight. Uh, I, High five. I That is a great that. idea. By the way, before That's we a take idea. a quick uh, fade to black, somebody's going to run I, I that. wanted to mention for those of you who uh, were not an antithetic, you yeah. might want to go next year because Rachel said if everybody there would commit to getting 1% better. And they did, shoot. That Rachel would do a burpee contest with Bronson. Well, it's more of a challenge because I'm it not going to try to beat him. It was, well, they're going to put a, a time limit. A time and you, limit. Like, and and I have to it, do burpees. The entire time. Alongside. Bronson. But you know what? It's worth it. It is worth it. And I'm going to hold y'all. Don't you come back. If you went to Antithetic and you said, yes, I will try to get 1% better every single day. Don't you come back and say, I didn't do that. Don't you say I didn't get 1% better. You can get 1% better. I'm going to fulfill my end of the deal and you fulfill the end of your end of the deal. Let's take a quick fade to black. I am so excited about this potential weightlifting challenge because then... If people will do that, then they will stop saying, I only lost five pounds. Because once you're lifting five pounds and doing the strength of, you know, growing in five pounds, you'll feel it. And you will start to celebrate that small victory along and along instead of talking dirty about it. You know right? what I'm excited about? Yes. I'm excited about it. I got to work up to 170 is. pound lifts. I'm excited I'm about start. the challenge video that we are working on this week. I am too. It is going to be it is so, fun. so much fun. Well, so awesome. Some days may be easier may than not, others. May or may not be. But you're definitely going to want to be subscribed and hit that bell notification button. Yes. So that you can see the video that we are working on this week. It is, it is a multi-day video challenge. It is potentially going to be fun or yes. it's going to be horrible. But but it, I, I'm excited about this one, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you're not, why not? Do you know 
that 68% of the people who watch our videos are not subscribed to the channel. Can y'all fix that this week? Fix that. Fix that this week for us. Bless us, please, and just subscribe to the channel. Amy, thanks for the 4 dollars Super Chat said that last little bit you lost the home stretch, so to speak. You lost it by fasting and exercise. Can you be more specific on details? On, oh, oh, okay. Well, like, what do I do for exercise? Well, and what, what did, do I do what for did fasting? you do? You began eating when I you were eat, only hungry. I only eat when I'm hungry. So, Amy, the first thing that you can do when you're heading to the kitchen, you're about to pick up food, ask yourself, why am I eating this? Yep. Am I eating this because I am authentically hungry? Or am I eating this because I just had um, a hard telephone call or I just finished a project or I would like to reward myself for adulting and so that's why I'm eating because I, I get this. Is there something else that I can do to reward myself for adulting? I'm going to go do that instead of the eating. Is this what I want to be doing right now? I ask myself. So you really have to ha start a conversation with yourself. As far as exercise goes, I stopped saying I can't do this, I can't do that, I don't like this, I don't like that. None of that is motivating, none of that is helpful. The can'ts and the don'ts do nothing for you. Yeah. So I started deciding I was going to have my eyes on what I could do and what I do like. So what I do like is seeing pretty things, I like water, um, I like going to new places. I love touristy things. So that's what I began to do. I began to do water activities, exercise that would move my body in a water atmosphere, um, like diving, like swimming. Um, and I started going places. So you'll see, we, we go to Disney World, we go to local parks, we go to touristy things around the state of Florida so that I can get my movement in, I can get exercise in, start focusing on what you can do instead of what you can't do. And then stress management. Stress management was the biggest. Okay, so <laughs> Lynette, I have to put it up because she did a super chat. Ah, Rachel, can you demonstrate a burpee right now? I, it would be hard. It would with be all hard the with that, that but if you look up uh, burpee, you'll you'll see that's what I'm going to be doing. The burpee, <laughs> yes, it's going to be down to the ground, get up off of the ground, clap, jump, no, you jump, jump, and then clap. Yeah. So if you don't know what a burpee is, it's like yeah, you drop down to a plank, right? Then you're going to stand. You try up. to do one. Ah, oh, my. Oh, arm is trapped under sorry, the table. Sorry. So you're gonna let me take my shoes off. You're wow. gonna like go down to the ground and then you're gonna jump up and you clap. Do, yeah, you, well, you do a you do a, a clap, jumping right? jack. Am a I, jumping jack. A jumping jack. Okay, so let me try it again. So I'm gonna go down, get up, jumping jack, clap. Yeah. Right? Okay, so go down to the ground. You gotta go jump. all the way to the ground. Okay, I'm going to go all the way down <laughs> to the ground. There you go. And then I'm gonna There's jump. no camera on that. Right. Yeah, so it's drop to a plank, do a push-up, stand up, jump, do a jumping jack. Yeah. That was and, just and, for and, Lynette. Yeah, they kill you. Okay. They're not going to kill me. Don't say that. They're going to They're gonna. Okay, real me. quick before we move on to the comments. Uh, we're already late. Sorry. Uh, Sabrina, thank you very much for the comments. And thank you for the comment about changing people. I have a relationship that has been severed for a long while now. This feels so freeing to see this comment. Yes. Yes, that is so good. Thank you. Because you, and once you, I'm going to tell you, once you remove somebody from your space, especially if they're in like an advisory area of your life, like you you call them for oh, advice. Oh, Lynette said that was worth $1.99. Awesome. Um, then uh, you need to replace that. You need to fill that void. Yeah. You need to do the hard work to go find somebody that will speak good things into your life. If yeah. you just leave that thing void, I don't want you to like, get rid of all of your current family, friends, the coworkers that have been just like really influential in your life and then be like, okay, now I'm on an island. Yeah. No, you want to do that. Mimi's here. Hey, Mimi. I love getting to meet you in Baltimore. Okay. First comment from YouTube last week from Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Said, I've been doing keto for a few years. My youngest son finally jumped on board a couple of weeks ago. Nice. I'm so happy he will benefit from this lifestyle. He has already lost 10 Pound. Wow. Even better, he said to me today, this is the longest I've ever stuck with the diet. The food is delicious. What a victory, Teresa. Now I'm going to tell you, he's probably going to even like lose weight at a pace that you're like, at first you're cheering and then you're like, hey, wait a minute. How are you passing me when it comes to the health journey? And so, and that's the hard part. Because even if it's somebody that you love, like I love you, Joe, but when you were passing me as far as like weight loss, I was like, hey, slow down, sucker. Right. Because it can be a little bit challenging, but what a win. 
Next one is from Betty. Hey Betty, I have been on my keto carnivore journey about six months, started out really slow because I wanted lasting and sustainable changes in my life. So good, Betty. The last couple of months I have had a ton of stress and let me say, emotional eating is real, but I have managed to keep it mostly fat and protein, not carb. My weight is not going down, but it is not going up, thankfully. I wanted to let you know that Rachel's talks about giving yourself permission for meeting needs has really helped me in easing the guilt and beating myself up for snacking. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Betty. I really appreciate you saying that. So here's the thing that I think people mistake about keto, carnivore, the proper human diet. And that is, it's not a weight loss diet. It's not a weight loss way of living. It is a health optimization diet, and a side effect of this eating lifestyle is weight loss. Mm -hmm. When we come into eating a ketogenic way of eating, many times we're coming in damaged, and we have to fix that damage before we start seeing some of the outward results. So there's things happening on the inside, but maybe we don't see it on the outside. And we were ta- I was talking with somebody about that over the weekend. We were talking to Jocelyn about I was talking to Jocelyn about that. When, when we got started on keto, I started, Rachel joined me to save our marriage. Yes. She didn't want to do it. No. She just didn't want to get a divorce because <laughs> she was eating oatmeal and I'm eating bacon. And while I'm eating bacon, she's getting mad at me. Yeah. The problem was is, if you know anything about us, she was eating nothing but oatmeal, uh, like a half a cup of uncooked oatmeal and a half a cup of Greek yogurt a day for two years. She was eating 500 calories for two years and gaining weight. So when she started eating keto, she didn't lose any weight. She did, for over a course of a month, she was eating over 2,000 calories and didn't lose any weight. But what she didn't recognize was what you have. She didn't gain. Yeah. Now, I want you to hear, because you were absolutely right. You know, um, when I started, I didn't do it because I wanted to. I didn't want to. I did it because, for you. Do you see why that is not a good enough why? Yeah. That is not a why that is going to sustain you. If you if you or somebody you love starts a new eating plan or they start a new movement goal because you've nagged them into it, forced them into it, or like they're trying to adapt what is precious to you because they love you, it's not going to be a why that's strong enough to sustain them personally. They have to come up with their own why for doing it because after a while that like hey we're going to get a divorce wears out and i gave up i mean i'm i'm on keto 2.0 because yeah there was a point where i'm like you know what we ain't getting a divorce i'm fine i'm just gonna go back to the way we eat and we'll find other things to agree upon right Right. so you need your own why and then when she did come back to keto she she lost like Four sizes but only like three or four pounds but when i was in it for the long haul I was I was disappointed, but I didn't stop. Yeah. Because my why was different. Okay, next one is from Deb. Hey Deb. Deb said, Have you ever used powdered butter to make keto chow ice cream? And I saw that Chris just left. We have, and we have used butter powder. And I answered this, but I'm gonna put it here because I see butter. this all the time. Butter powder. Do not use powdered fats in your life. Unless, Unless you, emergency. You, emergencies or you're traveling. Okay, don't you don't want to use powdered fats. Understand the way powdered fats work. Now, MC2 oil powder is a little different because we know where it's coming from. Like that powdered fat is bound to gum acacia, like the perfect keto one anyway. But all powdered fats, the fat has to be bound to something. Something. Okay, you can't just take a fat and powder it and not have it bound. It has to be powder, attached to something. So if you look at butter powder and you look at heavy whipping cream powder, it's actually called sweet cream powder. Um, when you look on the label, it's going to say zero because you have a serving size. And this is a game they get to play as a company. They can make the serving size whatever they want. It's not like in Europe where serving size is 100 grams. Here, they can make it whatever they want. Right. And they're 
purposely trying to have 100 calories or zero carbs. And there's a rounding thing in the United States. And it's not even the company. It's required by law for companies to round on the label. And they round down. I remember talking to uh, Dave over at Nush a couple of years ago. And he was saying that they originally got had on the label for the Nush cakes. It was like 2.65 carbs. And they got in trouble. They got in trouble they, for you being must that honest. Round. You must round. They can, on the front, like Keto Chow, if you ever look on the front, so it'll say like 0.8 grams of net carbs, right? But when you go on to the back, it must be a rounded number and they round down. So if it's, if it's less than a half, it's going to be rounded to zero. So when you look at that butter powder, it says zero. Butter powder. But there's more carbs in butter powder than there is in liquid heavy cream. Mm. Uh, and significantly more carbs. So if you go by calories, 400 calories of liquid heavy whipping cream uh, is like 3.3 carbs. But again, remember the label and even on liquid says zero. And 400 calories of butter powder is 4.4 carbs. But the label said zero. So if you go to Keto Chow's website, I left a link for this blog post that Chris had down below. He's got it listed out. And you'll see where he's got to go by per calorie. Don't go by birds per serving. Go by per calorie. How many calories of that butter? We, we use four tablespoons of melted butter in our Keto Chow. So that's 400 calories. And if you figure it out, it's 4.4 total carbohydrates. So you it'll work. And it's great if you're on the road and you need a fat source on the road, but don't use it at home if you have access to butter or heavy cream because you're adding a lot of carbs that you don't realize you're adding. Treat it as a vacation thing. And honestly, like I have to be really careful with it because it is very tasty and it has a very good mouthfeel. And like, I will just spoon it into my mouth. The first time we got it, right, again, we didn't understand we that. We were making, you know what it was you used were, for? We went to a tub in a month. We were making, um, Keto Connect has a fantastic recipe for like Stoka bars. And so we were buying That's what it, we bought it for. That's what we bought it for was to make Stoka bars. And we would make a batch of Stoka bars and use like a small amount of that butter powder and then I would eat the rest of the canister. Yeah. It's crazy. So Andy said, what about MCT powder? So that's that's what we were saying. So MCT powder, but again, that's you'll see that. MCT powder, if you get a good one, is going to be bound to something, again, right. And the good ones, like the one from Perfect Keto, and that's why we really like Perfect Keto, because a lot of them are bound to maltodextrin or dextrose. Yeah. Um, but it, Perfect Keto binds it to gum acacia, which is a fiber, which is a good, healthy fiber that actually helps your body create ketones and helps with your gut. That's why their, their MCT powder won't mess with your gut as much as liquid, but it has carbs. And again, we all, we count all carbs, but I understand that those carbs are treated differently, but I still count all, all carbs so I don't overdo it. Like we count the ones in um, Keto Brains, there's four carbs. Most of it is the gum acacia, but I still count it. But you see, here's the thing is they're putting it on the label because they're letting you know how much there is. They are being truthful on the label. So if you look at a serving size of... Um, Perfect Ketos, I think it says it's like two to four carbs depending on the flavor, and that's for whatever 100 or so calories. So again, if you multiply it out by four, cal four you know, 100 calories, you could be up to five, six, seven, eight total carbohydrates. Christina's here. Christina, it was so good seeing you in Baltimore. I love how she says, my mission now is to organize a meetup in New York. We have to continue to spread the message. That's right. So true. Thank you and for that. And Dustin wanted to know, so I'm talking about exact cards. How do you find it out if it's not on the label? A couple of ways to do that. First of all, I always assume, unless it's something like meat, I always assume it's a carb. I, it's just easier to assume it's a carb. When it comes to seasonings, it's a carb. Like, for example, like if you go buy chili powder, it's going to say there's zero carbs in here. But look at the serving size. It's a quarter of a teaspoon. I've never only used that okay, as a so seasoning amount. <laughs> always assume it's a carb. That's one way. But you can also go into like chronometer. And let's say you're using four ounces of heavy cream. 
if the company was truthful in this in the thing, like if you go put one tablespoon of heavy cream, it shows up as zero carbs. But if you put four ounces, it'll show up with what it actually is. So use what you had for the whole day, not per serving. I don't know about the butter powder in chronometer, but the best way to do it is if it says zero, if it's powdered, if it's something like that, assume it's one. It's just easier that way. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. It's from I believe Tony. Hey Tony, I have a question about daily protein intake. How is that figured out? I read where an eight ounce steak provides about 30 to 40 grams of protein. If I weighed 200 pounds, I would need to take in 200 grams of protein. 200 grams equals seven ounces. So I would need to eat almost two pounds of that steak. Is that right? Excuse me, not really. Um, okay, first of all, you don't figure out your protein based on how much you weigh. You would figure it out based on kilograms. If, if And so Dr. Barry is talking about you take what is your minimum amount of protein that you need, and he would say take your current body weight in kilograms, and that's how many grams of protein you need. And he goes on to say, and it's probably not enough. Here's the best way to do protein. Minimum of 100 grams. I don't care how much you weigh. I don't care what size you are. I don't care if you're a woman that's five foot two or you're a man that's six foot three. Mm -hmm. The minimum amount of protein that you need, minimum, is 100 grams of protein. You need 100 grams of protein. Uh, we need protein is the building block for everything. Um, I we talked about it last week. If you're looking for higher ketones for mental illness issues or maybe Alzheimer's or things like that, and you need higher ketone ratings, you don't get that by lowering protein. You get that by increasing the fat. fat and changing the fats that you have. Like for example, MCT will help you get more ketones because it goes directly to ketones. You don't lower the protein, not below 100. You need protein. So that, first of all, you're probably over, if, if, unless you're doing tremendous amounts of working out, 200 grams of protein is way too much, especially if you weigh 200 pounds. I eat between 110 to 150 pounds, grams of protein. If you go over, it's okay, but you don't want to go excessively over unless you're eating a lot of fat, because if you have a lot of protein and not enough fat, your There's body no will turn that into sugar if you're not giving yourself enough fat because your body will go, oh, I'm not getting enough fat, so I'll use the protein for fuel. But if you're giving yourself enough fat, it won't do that, okay? What you want to do to figure out how much protein is this something is go to like chronometer, okay? So here, here, we'll go to chronometer. Here's chronometer. Everything, every type of protein has a different amount of protein. Like there's a different amount of protein in chicken breast than there is in steak and different types of ground beef. So if we go, I want to add a food. So for example, I'm going to just add a food. Let's see, add a food and we're going to go. We're doing this on our phone. 80, 20 ground beef, right? So here it is. Always use raw because raw will give you the right amount of protein. So you always use raw. And so I have down here, let's say I'm going to eat one pound. So that's four, four ounce servings. Four four-ounce servings of ground beef is 77.6 grams of protein. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And it's 90 So if I go to a New York strip, Walmart, I mean, it doesn't matter. I like the USDA. USDA, New York strip, thick. And I go, I want one pound of that. It is 80 grams of protein. So see, it's changed. Okay, because the fat and the water also make it up. If I go to a ribeye, visible fat eaten, and I go, I've got 16 ounces. A ribeye has 121 grams of protein. So that's if you're eating, if you eat no visible fat eaten, we can even go there. Where is that? Uh, where? We got uh, 16 ounces. Okay, so it depends. It changes a little bit, but that is what the way you want to do it. You want to use a program like Chronometer, and then eventually you'll figure it out. And there is a free version, so don't like worry that you're like, well, I don't want to 
pay for something. And yeah, you don't need service. to pay for Cronmere. You do not need the to pay for the free version. Just takes off ads, and it allows you a couple extra things, like use the fasting thing or be friends with people so you can share recipes. So if you're like just that. using it to like, we have a link for it down below. But it, it is you can use a free. If version. you're just using it as like a search engine, just get the free version. Yeah. And eventually you'll, again, you'll just know. Like we yeah. don't do, unless we're doing something specific. Like a challenge. We don't track stuff. Like Robert is currently tracking because he's trying to become the leanest man alive. Let's stop right there. So that is a great thing to point out. He knows his context. The context for Robert Sykes right now is I am trying to be the leanest person alive. I have very specific macros. I track so much. He, he needs to track every morsel that goes in his mouth so if i like him as a friend and i watch him as a fan because he is doing that thing do i also need to do that thing are you trying to become the leanest woman alive no i are am you not. working out for two hours a day no i am not so just because i like somebody i admire someone if they don't have the same context as me then i first of all i need to identify that and then I need to be able to say, okay, I don't need to do everything that they're saying. Right. Because I am not trying to fulfill those things. That that was another thing that got brought out. There's lots of doctors in the space. They all have very different patients. Right. First of all, identify who is the majority of their patients and then say to yourself, am I in that classification? Right. Am I in that category? If, for example, Dr. Sivas is dealing with morbidly obese people who are or bariatric patients. Are you? You're going to address those patients and treat those patients differently than someone who needs to lose 20 or 30 pounds. Dr. Boz is trying to take people who are severely metabolically sick. Are you on the brink? can't even get into ketosis eating a ketogenic diet. Are you that person? Are you, So, and again... Ketosis, please don't strive for it's gotta be 0.5 or I'm not in ketosis. If your meter says 0.3, you're eating you're fat, creating ketones. You're fat fuels. If you're not, if you're eating less than 12, 20 total carbohydrates a day, I promise you your body is using fat for fuel unless you're not eating any fat. You're not giving it any choice. Right? Because your your body needs more than 20 total carbohydrates a day to survive. So you have to look at that. Now everybody should be subscribed to Two Crazy Ketos because Obviously. we're not giving you a specific thing to do. We're here for community. community and support you and help people along their journey, which is why we say I don't care if you're keto. Well, everybody is keto. If you're eating a low carbohydrate diet, you're all eating a ketogenic lifestyle. But whether you're doing a super meat heavy, you're doing carnivore with new, no vegetables, you're doing a, a, a keto one where you're having meat and vegetables no and maybe having a little bit of treats, we're, we're here to support everybody. And that's why you will never see, see us say carnivore is better because I don't think carnivore is better. I'm not going to say ketovore is better because I don't think ketovore is better. It's what works for you and we're going to support everybody no matter what. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one is from John. Hey, John. Uh, this was related to when they were talking about you trying to increase your uh, fasting glucose. Okay. Trying to create a dawn phenomenon. Yes. So John said, what about drinking a ZV in the morning to trigger insulin? Uh, because Dr. Sivis was worried your insulin was too low. That's right. He said, or consuming a teaspoon of monk fruit or just chewing a piece of gum. Dr. Barry says that anything that tastes sweet can trigger a cephalic phase insulin response. Why not use the cephalic phase to trigger insulin in the morning instead of breaking your fast? Dr. Berg says having more than one cup of coffee can tr trigger insulin. Also, Dr. Barry agrees with Dr. Sivis' conclusion uh, and recommendations. That's a different story. I yeah. just want to address the cephalic insulin response. Not everybody suffers from it. And there's no way of knowing if you do. So that's number one. There's no way of knowing because you cannot measure insulin at home. So that's that's first part. Second thing about that is it wouldn't raise it enough. What Dr. Cyrus was looking for is Rachel to have a, a nice spike in glucose in the morning to make insulin come out. But with the cephalic insulin response, it only releases a little bit of insulin because when you said so it thinks it's going to get something sweet. But within a couple of minutes, and there are studies about this, it goes away within a couple of minutes, which is why your glucose doesn't tank. If your body released a lot of insulin, 
your glucose would tank. It would, you would see it go from 80 to 60 or because you didn't give it any carbohydrates. So if you have a cephalic insulin response, like drinking a Diet Coke or some monk fruit or something like that, you're, you generally don't see a decrease. If you see a big decrease, you're having a major insulin reaction. Right. As far as Dr. Berg, putting anything other than water in your mouth will create a touch of an insulin reaction. It, there's questions about the coffee. But if you chew a piece of gum, yeah, you're going to release some insulin. But again, not a lot. If you eat a nut, you're going to release insulin. What and if you are a nut? It's a different story. Um, and you can't lose weight in the presence of insulin, which is why Dr. Barry says be careful with the cephalic insulin response. So if you're only eating one time a day, but you're drinking Diet Coke every hour on the hour and your body is releasing insulin, guess what? You're going to struggle to lose weight because you're constantly releasing insulin. Okay. Uh, we had a super chat. Let me get back up there. Uh, Betty, thank Aww, you very much for thanks, the $20 Betty. super chat. Wow, appreciate you. Thank you so much. And Rose, thank wow. you for the $5 super chat. Thanks, Said, Rachel, Rose. your blouse is beautiful. I would love to have one. Oh, like thank it. you. Ross, uh, dress for less. I got that. I have this one and I have a blue one. I want to say I paid $10 for it. But what it really appealed to me was the fact that, you know, sometimes I can be really hard on my underarm area that's got loose skin on it. And finding a fun sleeve really helps. Mm -hmm. Moms, nuts. We are so far behind. Yes, we are. Uh, Alexandria said, hey, does Alexandria. the meat flour need to be refrigerated after preparing? The Carnivore Crisp package doesn't say, and I don't want what I bought to go bad after opening. Great question. This is a great question. Okay, and the reason I put it in here, because I we've seen a lot of comments about it. So, yeah, we made the meat flour. You got the meat crisp. Here's the thing. What that meat flour is, is dehydrated meat. You've taken all of the water out. That's basically preserved. The problem with any kind of dried meat, dried product, dehydrated, the biggest issue you have is moisture. We live in Florida. Yeah. 80 to 90% humidity is a good day. So you have to like preserve it the best you can. You don't want to ex ex expose it to moisture. Technically... That grind, that dried meat, that meat powder will be fine. Put it in an airtight container. We store it in the refrigerator Just to preserve extra. freshness. Yeah. Um, you can buy oxygen absorbing packages and put that in there. Um, or you can vacuum seal. So like, um, for example, like meat, if you make beef jerky, vacuum seal it. Mm -hmm. It'll last even longer without using any type of nitrates or anything like that. So when it comes to the meat flour, we store it in the fridge. You don't necessarily have to. The carnivore crust doesn't say you have to. But for us, it just preserves freshness. Let's take a quick fade to black and come back with some more. Rose said, I'm going to have to go to Ross more often. Yeah, they sometimes, you know, you, it's one of those places like TJ Maxx. I love Bell's Outlet, too. Bell's Outlet is a great store. Um, you have to go in there with no expectation. Don't go in there like, I want to find a red shirt. You have to go in there and be like, I'm going to find a shirt. Because yeah. <laughs> you don't know what they're going to have. Uh, first one we have is from Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. I have two challenges. Likely related. I've become pretty adverse to meat. I just don't like it without heavy condiments, which add up quickly mac macro-wise. And I'm hungry a lot. It's 1030 and I just ate the lunch I packed. No idea what I'll do when lunchtime actually comes around. I suspect I'm not eating enough protein and likely fat. I tried the homemade keto bricks and can barely choke down a small piece, maybe one to two tablespoons worth. I haven't had the energy to make keto chow shakes and they only keep me satisfied satisfied for an hour or two anyway, regardless of fat, source, or amount, even with extra protein powder. I want to do triple B and E to reset myself, but I could gag just thinking about it, so it wouldn't be sustainable for me. Any thoughts? Okay, so I have two thoughts. I know that you probably have one. Just remember, we're going to run out of time. Um, but here, here's what I'm going to say. If you're having an aversion to meat, like it just doesn't sound appetizing, change up the meat, but you need to eat meat. So if the thought of eating beef is like, oh, I don't want to eat beef, eat chicken, eat eggs. But your diet should be mostly meat. Um, that's going to be the best protein. That's what's going to satiate you. I love keto chow. We use it. Drinking a keto chow isn't going to be nearly as satiating as chewing a steak. It's just not. As much as we love it, keto chow is designed for on-the-go 
or if you can't eat solid foods for some reason, it's not supposed to be your sole source of nutrition. Chris will tell you that. He did that 100-day challenge for a specific thing to analyze fats and things. It can be done, but it's not what it's designed. He will tell you, drink a keto chow on your way out the door because you're really busy, but you should be focusing on eating a bunch of meat. If you're hungry at 1030, eat, but eat until you're full and focus, but eat bacon and eggs. And if the thought of eating meat doesn't appetize, then you're probably not really hungry. So I know I look like a grandma, but on the inside of me is a toddler. And a toddler is going to have a fit when they need to do something that they do not want to do. As a carbohydrate addict, going from eating carbohydrates to eating um, a keto whey, I, everything, everything turned my stomach, everything gave me a headache, I don't like anything, I don't like this because I don't want to do this. It's like the last stand of our mind is, well, I'm just going to make myself sick over it, right? What does a toddler do? They, they start yelling, they start screaming, they're on the ground. What is the last thing before you feel like as a parent, you have got to intervene here? I'm going to throw up. I'm going to make myself throw up. So I find that everybody pretty much goes through that. If you've ever had any type of food um, addiction, carb addiction, like I have, it's like, I don't want to do this thing. And so when we say to ourselves, like, I'm sick, this is making me sick, then it gives you the final opt out because like, what do you say to somebody like, well, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to get sick if I eat this. Well, then you want to say to that person, well, then just don't eat it because I don't want you to get sick and I love you. But if you, I promise you, if you push past it and do it long enough, and I know that that's hard to say, you will stop feeling sick when you eat it. You will stop feeling sick because it stops being like I've got one foot in and one foot out. And it just is like, this is what we do. Yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah. You know, so it's, it really is challenging. Um, but you got to get on the other side of this. So Reese says, they crumble crisp packaging says refrigerated after opening, but I haven't done that. The flowers, my jars are from March, still no mold issues. I keep the bags in my work bags for days, no issues. With the carnivore crisps, you do need to refrigerate them after opening because there's a fat. The leaner the thing is, the leaner the, the product is, the longer it can stay out of the refrigerator. Fat will go rancid. The meat flowers are very have lean. almost no fat yeah. in them. Whereas, like the carnivore crisps, like if you make our carnivore chips, like I have a link for how to make them down below. Don't leave those There's out. lots of fat, so you got to vacuum seal it with an oxygen packet, and then um, when you open it up, yeah, you have to eat it or it's going to go rancid. If I would not leave those out of the refrigerator more than a week or two weeks, even vacuum sealed, because again, there's a bunch of fat in there, especially when we do ribeye ones. Uh, we're going to blow want, through these. Next I one is from Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Amanda said, I decided to focus on healing my body and hormones since my Hashimoto's diagnosis. So I've been eating mostly beef and butter with an occasional keto chow ice cream for a while. Very high fat, a minimum of 100 grams of protein per day. Perfect. Very few carbs. I definitely have avoided looking at calories because of my lifelong fear of eating. Yeah. Just track protein, fat, and carbs. I've been avoiding the scale because I was convinced yes. that I'd be gaining weight because I'm eating a lot of fat. I wanted to focus on healing and not weight. Today, I braved the scale. I'm down eight pounds. Wow. Uh, since I started this, 14.75 pounds since my birthday in April. This even while I, uh, I haven't been able to exercise because of foot and back pain. I look back on my tracking. I have averaged over 2,000 to 2,400 calories a day. Amanda. Sometimes nearly 3,000. Okay, so clearly, it is not about calories. In the past, I've gained weight on 1,000 cal calories a day. Same. Sometimes even less. Congratulations. And this is back. Back to what we yeah. were talking about before. So good, Amanda. I saw somebody asking about, like, uh, I think it was uh, Becky um, asking about uh, the Dr. Boz ratio. Don't worry about any of that stuff. If you're brand new, don't eat carbohydrates. Boom. Don't eat carb For the first month, as little as don't possible. count anything. Eat meat. Don't eat carbohydrates. You're going to be good. Bronson talked about this weekend, and I know we're late, but you never need to track your... Unless you are trying to heal mental issues like okay? me like Rachel yeah. like Becca and that means you're not trying to lose weight okay 
unless you're trying to do that, there is zero reason to track your carbohydrate, your, your ketones. You don't even need to get on the scale. You won't be able to overeat if every time you sit down, you eat until you're full and you don't eat carbohydrates. Your body will figure it out. Okay. The key is consistency. Yep. You have to keep being consistent. And sometimes for some people, the scale can make you be inconsistent that you, if, when you have to be consistent, I need to eat this way every single day over and over again. Not three days and then move on. If you get on the scale, you have to ask yourself, is the scale an, an obstacle to my consistency? If I step on that scale and I see something that I like, like I see, oh, I like that number, will it cause you to be less consistent? Eat things outside of the plan because you're thinking to yourself, well, I've got some room to, like I have leeway to get away with it. Or will you step on that scale and say, I'm a terrible person. Nothing ever works for me. I might as well go back to the way I used to eat or punish myself by giving myself no food today. Yeah. So you really have to look at the scale. Is it is it an issue of consistency for you? Because consistency is key. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa said hey, question Alyssa. about fasting drops during uh, versus daily minerals versus electrolyte drops from Keto Chow. Amazon Prime has the fasting drops, $35 for the largest bottle. Don't buy Keto Chow from Amazon, okay? Uh, can I just state this? Number one, Amazon takes a big portion so you hurt the small company. And not just Keto Chow, I would say any, any of the companies, if you know they're a small company and you find it on Amazon, um, you're always going to find, even if it's the same price as that company's website, Amazon is... Amazon takes a giant portion, like more than 30%. A lot of times the company loses money having it on Amazon. Right. Keto Chow actually charges more money on Amazon. To try to make up for to the To try losses. to make up for it. Plus you lose your reward points and you don't get the customer service. So Keto Chow, use our link down below. It's going to be cheaper than Amazon. And believe me, you're going to get it in almost just as fast because they're super great with shipping. You generally get it within two to three days. Yeah. Um... I like, I like the, the taste, taste of them. I'm mixing and, and mixing them in my drink. The daily minerals are gross. I agree. I do, I can't recall what I thought about the electrolyte drops because I used them up a long time ago. Will taking the fasting drops daily provide me with a good amount of electrolytes? No. Um, I get plenty of sodium through my use of my salt, and I don't have any symptoms around the world regarding electrolytes. I do take daily iodine pills since I no longer eat iodized salt. It has some form of potassium in it, but I think not much. Um, okay, so... The fasting drops are strictly designed for fasting, really. It's pretty much just sodium. It doesn't have all the electrolytes in it. You want to use the daily electrolytes. The best thing to use is the daily minerals and just use a little bit throughout the day. You don't yeah. have to do that full serving all in one pop. No. And then you can supplement with the electrolytes. The daily minerals will make it. You don't have to take iodine or anything. It's got everything that Dr. Barry says you can't get in your food. Everything that you need it's in there, like all of the different minerals. After that, if you're not going to use those, I would use the electrolyte drops. The fasting drops are really just for fasting. Yeah. Um, long term. If you're already eating a lot of salt, you certainly don't need the fasting drops. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Scott. Hey, Scott. How do you deal with family and significant others that don't much. support your keto carnivore lifestyle? You, I think we've mostly addressed it, but you can just, you kind of talked about it over the weekend. You have to just be you, right? You be you. You be you. Don't don't worry about it. I mean, and and think about why do you think that they're saying that? Yeah. A lot of times, you know, it's because they don't want to have to deal with their own stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. If you are getting well, if you are getting thinner, if you have more mobility, and I don't, um, they may be they may have signed a document with you that you didn't even realize. They've made a they had made a pact with you that you are both going to stay unhealthy together. And now you have broken that pact that you didn't realize you signed, and they're dissatisfied that right. you are getting well. So you it, just go on getting well. It may take a couple of years. Just keep doing. You keep. You have to focus on you. Yeah. We love our children. We come first. I. I love Rachel. I love my kids. Rachel comes before my kids. Well, I think that you have to be well enough that when they're willing to come back around and talk to you about it and maybe change things, you'll still be alive to have that conversation. If you do not get well now, for some of us, we were on the brink of death. And so if we do not get ourselves well, I won't be here to have that conversation with them when they're ready to That's have right. it. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why are you worried? <laughs> because we haven't even gotten the comments yet, and we have like eight more to go. Okay. Ready? Carol said, Hey, Carol. I currently have a subscription for Element. I ordered Relight during their sale, but I see Liquid IV has a sugar free and is on Prime sale. To the smart people who do more research than me, what are your thoughts on Liquid IV sugar free? Don't, it's garbage. It's garbage. Don't it's, get it. It is flat out garbage. Do not buy Liquid IV. So that's a good Don't quick buy one. it on Amazon. Don't buy it. In, they sell it in Costco. Do not buy it on it's a boat. It's got maltodextrin, it's got dextrose. Use it. Here's the ones that we're always going to recommend. Do not to buy you. it with a goat. Element, Relight, Perfect Keto. I like them, but I don't think their ratios are as much. I think I like the electrolyte balancing better in Element and Relight. So those are the best ones to buy. So Redmond has zero carbs. Element has a couple of do carbs. Do not buy it here or there. Right. Do not buy it anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Next one's from Becca. Hey, beautiful Becca Price. I'm going to be traveling in August for two weeks in a way that won't let me have refrigeration available. I'd like to bring some meat chips, chips and jerky with me. All the research I've done says that dehydrated meats need to be pre-cooked before dehydrating plus cured in order to be shelf stable and kept or kept refrigerated. Joe, when you make your meat chips, do you pre-cook the meat? Do you use a cure? I really don't want to use a cure or too much added salt if I can get away with it. Okay, so a few things really quick. I did answer but I wanted to do this for everybody else. We already discussed um, dehydrating removes moisture. Moisture is the biggest thing that causes bacteria growth in meat. Remember, jerky is long before us, long before electricity. It was designed to preserve your meat with salt. Again, on keto, we need salt. Back up, please salt your food. You need to eat sodium. But no, when I make my beef jerky, I do not use a cure. I use a cure in my meat sticks, which we do not have a full video. We only have it in a vlog, but I don't use it in beef jerky. When we, when we dehydrate, when you're dehydrating at 160 degrees, you are cooking it. Yeah. So when we pull out those meat chips out of the dehydrator, those thin like carnivores, they are cooked you're cooking it, you're just slow cooking it at 150 to 160 degrees. The more fat, the quicker it'll go bad, as we said earlier. If you vacuum seal it in a bag, and it's like even like the ribeye ones, you got about a week to two weeks of it being shelf stable, no refrigeration at all. The leaner it is, the longer it's going to last. Vacuum seal it, throw an oxygen absorber, you'll be in there fine. We took bacon, we take bacon jerky with us, we take uh, meat chips with us, no refrigeration. We brought bacon jerky with us. It was delicious. And that's bacon, super fatty. I actually shared none of the bacon jerky packages. She ate four packages. With Joe. Yeah. I ate them all. Next one's from Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Fact check reminder. Keto is not a type of food. Yes. Keto is a metabolic state characterized by raising levels of ketones. Yep. It is not as simple as eat keto. You need to live keto. That means low carbohydrate meats, at meals, adequate sleep, stress reduction, and daily movement. Eating keto and watching YouTube video isn't enough. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I, I'm going to need you to bring that back up on the screen, yo. Eating keto and watching YouTube videos isn't enough. Watching YouTube videos isn't Except enough. Except for ours. <laughs> so no, I mean that is that is so It's good. Brilliant. That is a word that like I think we all need to hear, right? Because I can be very guilty of like watching videos about something I'm trying to optimize. Like I'm trying to, you know, get a move right like so i can watch burpee videos to get my burpee like form just right yeah but not actually do the burpees right. joe i can just it's watch it work. i can just watch people perfectly execute burpees and that is like it's basically it's not gonna really help it is the difference between wisdom and knowledge yeah i can sit and watch stuff all day long and gain knowledge but I need to have wisdom. I need to put it into practice in my life. I love that. Danita said, hey, great Danita. news. My husband wants to get back onto the keto way of eating. Yay! He wants to know how to best keep keto truck cold at work until lunchtime, no access to fridge. He rides a shuttle and needs to keep it compact. So maybe not carrying it in a cooler. Ice cubes, partial freeze. Uh, you can partial freeze it. Yeah. You can put a couple ice cubes. Here's what I would tell you to do. Make them and then get him a stainless steel blender bottle like we have some on our website that say yeah. two crazy ketos um 
or any or a a Stanley, any kind of stainless steel container that you can screw the top on, obviously, where you can make it so it's not going to spill, and pour it in there, maybe with a couple of ice cubes. That's going to keep it cold a long time. Just don't make them, like if you're making, for example, with butter, you don't want to make it and store it in there in the refrigerator because if you put a warm one in the refrigerator, it'll take like five days to get cold because yeah. it's stainless steel and it's insulating it. So make them in whatever you make them in, put them in the refrigerator, and then that morning when he gets up, pour it into a stainless steel container, maybe a couple of ice cubes if you want, and then take that with you and you don't have to worry about it. We have also, I mean, and this may not be for him, but I feel like it might be for somebody out there. Um, they sell electric little, but like. She said no cooler. I know, but a, but maybe she means bringing it back and forth. Okay. Um, but if you have an office type setting, you can get those things like we have where it is a plug-in electric uh, refrigerator freezer thing that's yeah. very compact and yet will keep things It'll like super cold office. if you have an office. Next one's from Steph. Hey Steph, I am so sad. I don't have any friends in this community. I went to Keto Palooza and spent the weekend mostly alone. I thought I would find friends somewhere. Went to a meetup in Indiana and now see most of them were together last weekend. You wanting me to? I want you to. What my this. advice would be on that? Um, well. I love what the Bible says about if you want to have friends, you must first um, show yourself to be friendly. And I really, first of all, applaud you for taking that first step of showing up. What is it? 80% of success is showing up. You've yep. showed up. Okay. But here's the thing. It's like when it comes to keto. If I sit down and I eat one keto meal, am I done? Do I look and say like, okay, weigh me, like I, I've done, I did that, I, I, I complete, job completed. No, it is get back in there and do it over and over and over again. You need to put yourself into community and you need to now, okay, like I showed up to one or I see people getting together. Now it is go into level two. You got past the first hard stage of just putting yourself out there. I get that as somebody who's been rejected a lot over my lifetime that like it's very hard to just walk through the front door. That's the first thing. But I have to go in and level two is engage. Right. Engage. Start doing it before you even see the results. Go in with the attitude of not like, I'm going to have eyes on all the people who don't want to friend me. Go in there with the the person that makes eye contact with you and go up to them and you be the friend you want to, to have in your life. You have to put yourself out there and keep putting yourself out there. And socialization is a is a muscle we have to develop just like anything. It's we, we've atrophied, especially if you think about those Lord Voldemort years. Face to face relationships and friending somebody, we, we don't have muscles for that. Right. That's something that we're going to have to strength train over and over again. So do not give up. Get out there. If you see that the people from like an Indiana meetup has like, hey, I see them going out, reach out to them. Hey, remember me? I was at the Indiana meetup and I would love to be invited the next time you're doing something in my area because I promise you, people do not want to overlook you. They right. don't not love you. They don't want to not friend you. Um, maybe they just, they forgot or they weren't aware or you need to just like vocalize more. Hey, I am available and I want to engage. And I promise you just seeing this come up on the screen, there are going to be people that reach out yeah. to you. Can I add to this? Absolutely. Real quick, because I, I, we're going to go long because last week was short. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so people can leave if you have to go somewhere else. Here's what I'm going to say. Yes. Number one. How do I say this without seeming nasty? Some of it's on you. You got to engage. You got to put yourself out there. I am an introvert. Yes, you are. A lot of people don't believe that. I'm. If you see me at a conference, I'm most likely, unless I know who you are, am not going to come up to you. And that's me. That's your fault. It, it's, it's me. It's because I'm afraid to be rejected. Okay? It's on me. I have to, and I have worked hard on 
I love conferences that have name tags because I can walk up and you and yeah. say, hey, Becky, you know? And so I'm an introvert. And I know that when you go to conferences, you have to put yourself out there. And the reason I put this in there, because somebody is now going to message you. You've taken a huge step going into our groups. And saying, this but, upsets me. But go into the group and say, hey, I need somebody. But I know, Jackie just put a thing. They're talking about doing a Friendsgiving. When they put a thing out there, that's open to everybody. You don't, that's not, oh, can I come too? She put it out on our Facebook group. Hey, we're having a Thanksgiving, a Keto Friendsgiving in Indiana or whatever, th that's your invitation. Yep. Just go. Keep I it. have, with all of the conferences we've gone to, and we go to four or five a year, I've never seen somebody sit down at a table, whether it be this past weekend or Keto Palooza, sit down at a table and see the group of people sitting at the table go, oh, you weren't part of this group, please leave. Right, right, yeah. Right? And let us know if they, if they, if, if someone does that. And here you go, Jack, we're going to move on. Uh, but Jackie, thanks for the $5 super chat, said, if she's close enough to come to a quick dinner, Dustin, Jennifer, and I get together every month. She's welcome to email me or Dustin. That is there awesome. You Thank you. There's your invitation. And I think that sometimes we have to change the little, like, name tag on our own sticker. Sometimes I've gone into a room going like... Lonely. <laughs> no, my sticker's always been, no one ever wants to be my friend. Yep. Overlooked. Rejected. Like, if I go in there and I'm anticipating, no one's going to talk to and me. And this just isn't to her. This is to This is to everybody. everybody. I'm yep. so glad she posted it because yep. we can all kind of adjust. But if I, if I have already decided that my name is rejected, then what I will do once I've decided that is, is start to formulate um, stuff that proves that. Yeah. I will start to put together proof that that is the case. See? Nobody talked to me. See, nobody sat next to me. See, nobody invited me to anything. I'm, I've already built the case. I decided I'm rejected. Right. So then I'm just like, I can come home from an event with that rejected sticker and just be like, look, look at all this supporting data. But if I go in there and say, before I even get there, I've decided I'm going to make some friends today. I am friendly. I am invited. I am, I am precious and worthy of friendship, then I'm going to go in there and find supporting data for that. Yeah. We have one more. It is from Marianne. Oh, Marianne! So getting ready for a full day of conference, I had an opportunity to get a picture of Rachel and Abby. Yes. Pre-keto Abby was my stunt double and all my adventures because I hated having my picture taken. Now I'm happy to be part of the photos with Abby this and Rachel. This was my... So when I was got home yesterday, I love you so much. I got home yesterday, Mary Ann, and um, Caleb had asked me what was what was one of your favorite moments from the um, from the conference, and I said it was getting a picture with Mary Ann. So Mary Ann was like me. I used to use a toss pillow in every picture to mm. kind of distract from me. I always had an obstruction, and Mary Ann had shared that she had this little Abby doll. It was so cute, and and she changed its outfit and everything. And any place she went, she would perch that Abby doll and take a picture like Abby is out at this place. Abby is doing this because it was like a substitution for seeing a picture of her. Like she was there, but not comfortable enough to put her own picture out. Instead, Abby was like the surrogate for picture taking. And boy, that did speak victory for me. That it was like, it's, yeah, keep, Abby can come along too because she's so cute. But the fact that you got a picture of you, you are more beautiful, more precious, and you are a real life person. I want to see that real life person in a picture because Abby is no substitution for precious, precious you. So thank you for letting me be a part of that picture. That really was a big highlight of the conference for me. Let's look into some of these comments from today. Uh, Sandra said, Rachel, hey. what are the differences you find with keto brands? I just received mine after a while. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, they were able to restock. Um, so thankful. That is a that is a very small business. So they're really like, you know, they're they're making it. I know that they had some supply issues because it's just a brother and sister like making this product. Right. Um, but it is uh the what I noticed is focused um attention to what I'm on. So if you've ever been like, gosh, I have so much energy, concentrated energy, 
but there is no direction for it. You can be on a hamster wheel and get nothing done. That's when I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And it's like, Joe will come home and I had a plan to do a specific thing and he comes home and I'm surrounded by pictures and I'm putting photographs in, you know, in picture books. And it's like, this isn't what you said you were going to do today. That's misdirected energy. Right. I find that keto brains help me helps me to stay on task in the morning and get the most out of what I'm trying to do. Carrie said, hey, Carrie. I cook all the meats in my oven at 375 degrees, and right now I would put it in the new wave oven and cook away. That's good. Okay. Uh, John. Hey, John. John said, will you be able to make summer retired Bob's meet up in Omaha? No. I don't think we I don't are think because so. we have a couple of appointments that day. Before we get there. So um, when we, you know, when we get there, we have to go meet with uh, Dr. Seaman. Uh, we have to meet with Jay. So I don't think we're going to be able to. But it it's sounds just like gonna fun. It's going to depend on our schedule. But if you are going to uh, Omaha, our Hard to Kill Summit, make sure that you check that out because that would be a, like a really fun activity to do. Janice and Rachel, your hair looks great. How do you get your hair like that? She doesn't know. <laughs> I have no idea except for just this is, I stopped coloring my hair and this is but the style, my hair color. You you can't ever duplicate a style. I can't, I can't duplicate a style except for I do find that I have to keep it because of my hair texture is so fine. I have a lot of hair follicles, but they're not like very... They're not load bearing. Um, they're it's very they're very fine. I get a lot of flyaways. So the haircut is very important. Finding a hairstylist that'll be patient with you. And a lot of times, if my hair gets like heavy at all, I have to get it cut, even though it's short, to to keep it bouncy. Yeah. Cindy, hey, Cindy said, I've tried to be an influence to my son who has Crohn's, who has many surgeries and won't listen. It's aggravating. I just have to yeah, let it go. Yeah, let it go. And just trust that, like, you planted the seed. You did what you could do. And and when it's time, that, that seed will, will sprout. Dustin said, I hey, Dustin. think about this when I'm bringing 20-pound containers of kitty litter up the stairs to the litter boxes in the laundry room. That's 40 pounds. Crazy to think I've lost six of those. That is so good. So that, again, and that was something that was really brought out in the conference. Like, fitness is just you being able to do the thing that you want to do in a more efficient way. So... Jocelyn said a really great way that you can find out like what is one thing you could be working on? What is the one thing that you would like to be able to do better? If your challenge is, hey, I have a really hard time getting down on the ground and getting up off of the ground, then there you go. That is the one exercise that you can work on getting better at. Maybe you have to begin by having a lot of things around you that you can help pull yourself up on, but you are not going to get better at that one thing that is a truly functional fitness that you need to be able to do by just complaining that you can't do it. Yep. Start getting better at it. Tracy wants to know what brand of Keto Brains coffee creamers. It There's is only the brand. one. It's it, that Keto is the Brains brand name. with a Z. There is yeah. a link down below. Yeah, that is, that's the that's the brand. Teresa said, yes, Joe is correct. I lost 70 to 80 pounds depending on the week. It too, about a year plus. I think my skin is pretty good. That yeah. is awesome. Slower is better. It's better for your metabolism too. When, you know, because your body can adjust more. When you lose a whole bunch at once, remember your body... When you lose 100 pounds, your body doesn't need to have as fast as a metabolism as, you know, 100 pounds lighter than when it was heavy. I know that stinks, mm -hmm. but as you lose weight, your metabolism doesn't have to be as fast because it doesn't have to work as hard because it doesn't have yeah. to move that weight. So it'll adjust better. You will hit stalls slower when you do it on a slower pace as, as much as that stinks, but it's just better. I, we all want instant which is why everybody's using shots, but there's bad side results to instant. And like people, we recently had a client, should I use this shot? I'm going to tell you, no, I think it's a horrible idea. And there's more and more stuff coming out that using these shots to lose weight is going to result in a lot of bad things. Cause again, no clinical trials on these injections. None. We are the clinical trial. Uh, Matthew said, thank you hey, for Matt. the additional affirmation about cutting out people from your life. 
I've had to sever, to sever ties with a couple of toxic family members, and it was freeing. It is, but it's hard. I, we're not saying never talk to a spouse again. We're, no, but it's but it's hard, and you feel guilty. There is a guilt of being like, how am I going to not take all these phone calls? This person is demanding of me that I be underneath their thumb. And it, it's very challenging, especially if it has been going on for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I acknowledge that, that that is very hard to do. And I think that that's why community is so important because that person that you're trying to walk away from may so say something very ugly as you do it. And you need people to come alongside of you and say like, it is, it is okay. I know that you're not a bad person. I know that you are not listening to what they're saying because you're trying to have a better life for yourself and you're not alone in that. I'm also going through that. So I think, you know, when you're trying to get, a, you know, away from toxic voices, you need to lean into encouraging voices simultaneously. Yeah. Becky said, when I get the Chronometer app from Apple, they want me to do an in-app purchase. No. So you can download the app and it's going to say includes in-app purchases. You don't have to do them when you, it's all apps are this way. They give it to you for free. And then if you want the better version, you pay for it after you download the app, but you download the app for free. And then there's usually a little thing that says in-app version. You can use that free version forever. It's going to ask you when you download or at some point, do you want to get rid of the ads? Yes. Fine. Pay 30 something dollars a year, but you don't need it. It works fine without it. Yeah. Jesse said, I received my keto brains a few days ago. And as much as I love perfect keto products, brains is way better uh, than the perfect keto nutrition. But I agree. Yeah. I think it's very tasty too. Yep. Uh, Mary Jane said, two crazy ketos opens the world of all keto carnivore leaders to us. You two kind of test drive Aww. them for us. Give us good housekeeping. Two crazy ketos still in approval. How sweet. Thanks from the bottom of my heart. I love that. And that is a, that is a great way to um, talk about that because that is our desire as like, I feel like we're a community center for people, but just because like a class is opened at a community center doesn't mean you have to take every class, right? So I want people to know and be aware of, hey, there's all of these different things out there. There's doctors to learn from and there's people to, look, I think about um, Carnivore Werewolf. He is perfectly specific in that he is a carnivore truck driver trying to help other carnivore truck drivers. So if you start watching him because you're just like, man, he is just the nice, a nice guy and he has great tips and I could use some of his tips for traveling. But if you are not a truck driver and you go to carnivore werewolf and you're like, man, I am so upset or I'm frustrated because this is not working for me. Well, are you a carnivore truck driver? Everything he says may not be for you, right? Like he's very specific and that is a good thing. So I think that once you see, hey, here are all these different things that I can learn from, the next step is to say, do I need this? Oh. Is this message specifically for me? I just have to put this out because Michelle is on and said, hot Oma ah. alert. Michelle missed it. When Oma was doing burpees on camera. Before. Oh my gosh, it was so bad. She, she'll be able to show me how, how to, to do, do them correctly. Because she's a CrossFit trainer. That's before. right. Becky said, who amongst us also follows Dr. Boz? Um, she mentioned about Dr. Boz's number, by glucose, ketones to keep it below 40. I can't get the number uh, 98. Okay. Does that mean I'm not... No. Becky, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop focusing on the small stuff. My, yeah. The polite way of saying a saying that I like is stop trying to pick pepper out of poop. Although, How to pick, stop trying to pick chia seeds out of our keto pudding. I like mine better. Um, just keep your carbs as low as possible. How low? As low as possible. Preferably under 20 total carbs a day. Don't eat pasta, grain, sugar, starches. Focus on meat. Eat until you're full. Don't, you never need to check your ketones. You never, ever, ever, anybody who tells you you need to check your ketones, especially to lose weight, stop listening to them, okay? You don't need to check your ketones. You just need to not eat carbohydrates. And you notice he said to lose weight. Yes. Not to do other High things. High ketones does not mean more weight loss. That's right. It doesn't. When you check your ketones, here is what you are measuring excess ketones that your body is not currently using. They're in your blood. You're not using them. Who cares? 
My ketones are almost never over a 0.5 unless I do an extended fast. I don't eat carbohydrates. I, I'm not worrying about it. Yeah. Okay? Don't worry about it. I've seen Robert post his all the time. Robert's ketones are generally not that high unless he's in a severe caloric deficit. As we get closer to his competition weight, you're going to see that those ketones go yep. up. Matthew uh, said, "I just want to say how much of an inspiration that my uh, my wife, uh, uh, how much of an inspiration that my wife, working full time, getting her PhD, staying on keto, and doing her exercises. She is the best part of my life and an inspiration." You guys are the most romantic, and oh my gosh. Your wife had the hottest dress on this morning. I love it because she's like, I'm ready to start wearing new things. And and I this is, you know, a lot of people, it's time. If you if everything that you're wearing is like super baggy and you're just used to that, and we were used to that too, that like nothing ever touched our body because I didn't want you to see my body. And we've changed, you know, I've changed a lot of like what I will wear and what I'll be willing to show in public. And I'm not saying that like you need to go wear a bikini today, but I love the fact that like Sarah is like, I'm ready to start entertaining the idea that I could wear clothes that are tighter. And she was like, I, I put it on and I was still not quite comfortable yet. So she got a cute little like vest to go over it. She didn't just say, I'm putting the dress back into the closet and I'm not gonna wear it at all. She was like, I'm gonna find a way to take one step forward in this area. And I think that we can all do that. So if you're like, hey, I, I'm not ready to, you know, wear the shorts. Okay, what can you do to start celebrating the fact that you're not the same as you used to be? Yeah. Becky said, when do you check your numbers in the morning? Uh, right when you open up. Um, again, don't worry don't about it. Don't sweat the small stuff. You just, you just keep eating good food. Donna, to up my protein, my, co my doctor suggests whey protein powder to your coffee in the morning. I would suggest, but if you're trying to up your protein, protein powder, unless you're using keto chow, chow as a meal, okay? So you drink keto chow for a breakfast, a meal, it's a good protein, and then eat meat throughout the day. If you're just trying to increase your protein, don't add more protein powder. Eat more protein. Eat a meat. Yeah. Okay? So if you're doing like a keto chow, that's a meal. It's got all of your vitamins and nutrients in it. A, a, just having a protein powder without fats and stuff, you're you're miss you're gonna miss essential amino acids and stuff. You you know so. But if you need more protein, just eat more protein. Have a can of chicken. Can or of chicken. Shrimp. Can of tuna. We talk about if you can't eat anymore because you just fill up quick like me, eat a bag of carnivore chips. Yeah. Because you're going to get a whole bunch of protein. Like we, we showed during the conference, like a five ounce bag of like carnivore chips, like from ribeye. What, what was it? It was like 50 grams of protein. Adds up quick. Because it, it's the equivalent of eating like a pound of steak. Yeah. And so, it condenses. And it's, and, it, and you're not going to fill Make up your own. eating it. It's like eating 20 potato chips. Yeah. And only you're eating protein. It's good. Uh, Becca, hey, thank Becca. you to Crazy Keto's Joe for listing exceptions to general rules. Too often, it's a one size fits all dogmatism. Uh, thanks for saying that, Becca. And it's and I can't stress enough. It is the responsibility of the viewer to say this is what I should be focusing on. And you know, again, going into five seven nine and complaining to the cashier, I don't like this. That this is not for me does not, is not going to change what they carry at 579, yeah. right? Like that's it, that's, they told you what they're gonna do. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't do anything positive. I know that like we're gonna make straw, you know, we made the strawberry jam, jelly, preserves, whatever. There's gonna be people that are like, I don't like strawberries. What do you want me to do with that? Right. I can do nothing with that. I'm sorry. It makes you feel like very apologetic, like and awkward. Like, should we not have made this? Like, right. hopefully next time we'll make something you do like. Like, maybe just take what you like and don't take in what you don't like. Couple more. Matthew said, regardless of where you're located, you will definitely make friends in this community if you risk, risk it, it and put yourself out there. Keep doing it. Yep. I, I again. 
Uh, Bonnie said, for anyone considering the Alaska cruise, Maria posted about one mm. they were just on. Yep, she just got back. She went from the cruise directly to... She's got another to, couple trips to go on yeah. for people this year if you want to uh, go. She showed parts of it and talked about what they like and don't like the ship was a smaller one. Generally, Alaska cruises know. have smaller ships because they got to weave in and out. And the That is a fun into. thing to do. I can't wait. Is if you're looking... Bring your money if you want to go to Alaska. Right. That's all I'm going to say. Right. Uh, Tracy, what is your absolute favorite flavor of keto chop with the creamy? It changes for us. I'm going to tell you. Right now, it's raspberry cheesecake. That's for you. For right now, caramel macchiato with bacon bits as a mix-in is my fave right now. Caramel macchiato with the bacon bits. Last one, Jackie. Thanks for the thanks. $5, $2 super chat. Again, see, this is our community. So Look at that. If, if you're saying... I can't make friends, it's because you're probably not putting yourself out you can there. Do you don't this. have to put yourself out there a lot. I'm not saying go out there like Rachel, open arm, hug everybody, but just put okay. yourself out there. But that's you me. see a table, there's an opening, sit down. Promise. Somebody will talk to you. Yeah. Okay. Jackie spent seven dollars to say, Hey, I want to be your friend. Five dollars yeah. before, two dollars here. She sent her an email with her phone number as a message. Okay? You rock, Jackie. So that that you is rock. how our community it's we're so proud of our community that we've built. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I know we went long, well, but God we were it. short last week. Yes. Um, so I'm super excited. The internet worked today. Yes. <laughs> praise the Lord. We will be back on Thursday live at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We love you guys. Have a great week.